So I'm going to try to be quick. Um, we had a lively discussion, and I think, uh, I don't know exactly how Max organized this. There are a variety of concepts, but if I go forward, you have sort of the concepts associated with each question, right? So it's just a list of concepts that ended up coming up in the discussion in one way or another. But let me do it by organizing them uh, by questions. And uh, you know, we had discussions. We didn't agree on everything. And I'm not sure I can actually uh, accurately uh, give all the points of view, but just sort of give you some of the cons conceptual terms that we came up with on each of these problems. So does Shannon's paradigm need to be revised for its applications? Really, we address this as yes, implicitly, and, and what are the limitations that exist that, that need to be addressed? One is that it's come up many times, the issue about time and, and dynamics and putting that into the, into the theory in some way. The other thing, which is a, a common issue, is that uh, Shannon's theory is really built around digital signal processing and, and we're dealing with analog things and there are ways to do that but the question, one of the questions that we come back to later is what's the optimal way to do that and how do you know what's the optimal way to do that and, and I'll come back to that issue later. But that's, a, that's an issue about uh, analog versus digital. There are issues about we're dealing with networks uh, and there's, there can be uh, feedback, uh, networks can be heterogeneous, um, uh, the synergy things you know come together and and they're not additive they they, they can be super additive or sub additive or in, in various ways and all those things are not I think easily addressed at least not with standard um, information theory concepts uh, second question how does semantic coupling in biological systems uh, well you know what the questions are and and the things we came back where again uh, feedback is important it's something that's not handled and is actually incredibly common in biological systems. Channels can have memory, and in fact, part of the feedback thing is that the process can alter the channel, which is not part of um, uh, Shannon theory. Uh, how do you handle, there isn't really, th there's a lack of sort of modularity or isolation, that is components that, in an electrical system, for instance, you could make them isolated and move them around and they would have uh, characteristics that would be maintained. In biological systems, there tends to be lots of crosstalk between things within the system. Um, and so that makes them hard to handle and, and it limits predictability to, to some extent. If anybody from my group uh, wants to interject here, go, go ahead, I'm sort of uh, doing this. Um, so the third one, we sort of said, what, uh, what, what would be needed? Where, where would we go? What, what revisions would be useful? Uh, one of the things that came up was some some standardization or at least some uh, agreement about measures of entropy or you know what class of, uh, me of entropy measures are useful. Same thing for mutual information. Um, I don't know, this is something I wasn't so clear about. I had a friend uh, many years ago who said the great thing about standards is you have so many to choose from. And, uh, and so there's always that issue of standard standardization sort of can limit you or it can make you, uh, there are lots of standards to choose from, why have them at all? Um, one of the issues that came up was uh, optimality criteria. So if you've you know, you built some system and you're modeling it and it's like that, how do you know how good it is? Uh, that comes back a little bit to the previous issue about uh, one way to measure optimality is how predictive is it? And there are ways to do that. You want to, you know, going back to the issue that came up, we discussed quite a bit was, going from analog signals to digital, and you can do that by binning things, well, what's the right number of bins and all that stuff. And one way to assess that, of course, is just uh, how predictive is it? And if you overfit, you may get you know, high information measures, but you overfit to the point where the predictability goes way down. Um, uh, w one thing that w was brought up was that having coding libraries to share, and there are, of course, such things in various languages, like Python was already mentioned, but having more of those and, and more uh, knowledge about them uh, generally available would be useful. And then the last question, uh, what tools are needed uh, and what collaborations are useful, what tools are already available, et cetera. The thing that really came up was uh, uh, cross-field communication, making it, making resources available for um, people in one field to learn about the other field or to learn who, who else in other fields are uh, willing and able to collaborate and interested. I'm not quite sure the best way to do that, but some kind of common language maybe. Uh, coding libraries came up again. In terms of things that are already available, there are quite a few um, 
tools for, for instance, doing simulations, which are really useful. Uh, maybe they need to be more widely known. And somebody emphasized the fact that uh, having GPUs for simulations and things is a real benefit. And so making that as a resource, ask, uh, things like that as, as uh, resources and giving uh, accessibility to people in the field would be really useful. I think that summarizes most of it. Are there any things I missed or misrepresented? Okay, then I guess we're finished with this part.